This is the most shocking story of how a housewife and mother of two disappeared after she was abducted by aliens. Even ufologists can't disprove this story. Guys, and we've tried. Plus, get this, there were witnesses. Most mainstream scientists will never accept any claim that suggests that extraterrestrial beings visit Earth, not to talk of abducting humans. However, there have been many reports of such things happening, and some of these reports have been super, super detailed. In fact, there is an entire subculture created around the subject, with support groups and detailed mythos explaining the reasons for abductions. However, if you were to ask UFOologists what they think the most unbelievable UFO claim of all time is, first they'd probably mention the George Adamski saga. Then some would also mention the spot deep under Dulce, New Mexico, where it's claimed that aliens store human body parts. But narrow the search further down, and most would eventually settle on the Linda Cortile case. And get this, the story is actually vouched for by a top UFO investigator, Bud Hopkins. He details his account in the book called Witnesses, and in today's video, we'll be exploring the story. Bud Hopkins is a fairly popular UFO investigator, and in the 1970s, he particularly became interested in abduction reports. To help him extract dimly remembered details, Hopkins employed hypnosis, and with time, he soon became a figurehead of the growing abductee subculture. Naturally, more people started to talk about the topic until the topic became super popular. And then in the 1980s, UFO abduction reports started drawing mainstream attention. That's when we started to see works from prolific names like novelist Whitney Stryber and historian David Jacobs. Even psychiatrist John E. Mack presented alien abduction as a plausible experience. And folklorist Thomas Bullards ran a comparative analysis of nearly 300 alleged abductees. Now, as more and more abduction stories started coming to light, as shared by Hopkins, Jacobs, and Mack, alien abduction became an increasingly large aspect of UFOlogy. But for the most part, these abductions were believed to be few and far between. Though, UFOlogists and academics didn't exactly pay attention to them. Jacobs and Hoppix, however, argued that alien abduction was far more common than most people knew. They estimate that tens of thousands or maybe even more North Americans have been kidnapped by unexplained phenomena. They also claim that there is an elaborate process underway in which aliens are attempting to create human-alien hybrids, the most advanced stage of which will become known as Hubert's. The motives for this effort, though, are unknown. All right, back to Hopkins' story. In that story, a certain woman known as Linda witnessed a UFO abduction. Linda Cortillo was a housewife and lived on the Lower East Side of Manhattan with her husband and two sons. By the way, Cortillo isn't her actual surname. According to the accounts from witnesses, Linda was supposedly seen around 3 in the morning on November 30, 1989. The witnesses say she was floating upwards from her apartment to a brightly glowing UFO in the sky. But wait, it gets even weirder because they say she was accompanied by three gray aliens. One witness even said he saw tears running down her cheeks as she was abducted by the aliens. Now, who were the witnesses? Well, according to Hopkins, one was a retired woman he called Janet Kimball. The accounts say that she was driving to her home in Manhattan after a late party when on the Brooklyn Bridge her car stopped, as well as those of other drivers. The scene she described in her interviews was quite chaotic, with people honking horns and screaming their heads off. According to her, amidst all the chaos, she watched what she first thought was a movie being filmed. But then after watching for a bit, she realized this couldn't be a movie filming. It was a real-life alien abduction happening in front of her. As unbelievable as this sounds, Kimball's story is actually quite reasonable and convincing especially when you consider that the Cortile's apartment is very near the bridge. The stories from the other witnesses, though, send the Linda case reeling into pretty wild territory. Two of them wrote to Hopkins and introducing themselves as New York policemen who had witnessed the abduction from a car parked under the FDR Drive. The FDR Drive is a highway that runs along the east side of Manhattan 
and faces Cortiel's building. But back to the witnesses' story. Here's where their story starts to get a little weird. As they continued their story, the two witnesses who had introduced themselves as New York policemen would also go on to describe themselves as security officers working for an unnamed American agency and guarding a man Hopkins described simply as an international political figure. As it was turned out, said international political figure was allegedly Javier Perez de Colar, the Secretary General of the United Nations at the time. The stories were not adding up at all. Like that wasn't bonkers enough. De Collar supposedly saw the abduction too, and if you're thinking that this revelation only makes the account more unbelievable, you're not alone. Though on a side note, we might ask ourselves, why would he be any less likely to witness an abduction than any ordinary person? Anyway, the secretary isn't even the only top international figure said to have witnessed the abduction. Allegedly, he and his guards were part of a group coming late at night from the heliport on Governor's Island, which was at the time a military installation in New York Harbor. According to one of the guards, there were two U.S. government officials and two foreign statesmen, and other cars, each coming with guards of their own. Hopkins doesn't add this to the account, though, and he has stated that he doesn't know who these other dignitaries were. So far, so strange, right? Well, buckle up because it gets even weirder because Hopkins says that he never met the two security officers. They're only known as Richard and Dan, and Hopkins doesn't even know their last names either. The only way he knows their story is through letters and audio tapes that the duo sent in. Where it gets even more worrying is when you find out that Richard and Dan became obsessed with Cortell after their sighting. From what we know, they showed up at her apartment and even kidnapped her because they were afraid she could have been an alien, and also because they wanted to prove their story. Like that wasn't enough, Dan kidnapped Cortell again and was even going to have his way with her sexually before Richard showed up and stopped him. But here's the thing, earlier Dan had told Hopkins that he, Richard, and Aquilar had all been abducted along with Cortell. As you can tell at this point, the story had become pure chaos. But it gets even more chaotic. Dan goes on to say in his account that the aliens telepathically identified her as the Lady of the Sands, adding that she had held up a dead fish as she was taken up into the sky. Apparently, the Lady of the Sands also told her onlooking fans to look and see what they had done as she ascended. Now, Cortell didn't recall any of this consciously. But under hypnosis, she recalled similar details as to what Dan shared. Even more curiously, Richard, Dan, and Dequilar remembered every detail of what they witnessed without hypnosis. In fact, Richard kicked things a step further, claiming that he and Cortell had been abducted several times in their childhood. The shared experience brought the two together, and that was how they started their secret, shadowy relationship that would later evolve into a romantic one. In fact, Richard was quite convinced that he was the real father of Cortell's youngest child. Now, Cortell would not talk about the paternity of her child. But under hypnosis, she collaborated everything Richard said and even recalled the pet names they called each other when they were with the aliens. Now, definitely, this whole thing sounds crazy. And even this additional bit of revelation from Richard doesn't help matters. Apparently, while in abduction, Richard saw the aliens processing earthly sand and brought back some samples of before and after the sand processing. This is an alien abductee first, by the way. No one who has ever been reportedly abducted by aliens ever brought anything back from the alien ship that took them. But Richard was alert enough to bring back some samples, and under an electron microscope, the samples were allegedly different. Now don't get exasperated just yet, because there's another side to the Linda story. As it turns out, besides Linda, one Marilyn Kilmer, who was also abducted, this time with Cortell, de Collar, and Cortell's younger son, Johnny. From the stories, Kilmer identified the secretary from photographs. Even though she wasn't completely sure, it gets eerily creepy. As Kilmer and Cortell were able to describe what each other was wearing during the abduction, now we're not done with this episode of Stranger Things, because there's yet another side to the story that De Collar saw Johnny Cortell's son 
probably as he was being abducted. The story claims that Johnny, who was nine at the time, was asked if he wanted a present. Naturally, the little boy said yes, and Dick Kalar arranged to deliver a gift to him, which turned out to be an antique diver's helmet. So far, this is what we know of the case of Linda. And as you can tell, this story is quite wild. Is it real or is it a hoax? It has to be one of the two because this story is just too crazy to conclude that all the involved parties are suffering from a psychiatric syndrome. Think about it. There are people who said they watched Linda get abducted. Then we have Linda collaborating some tiny details from Richard's account. How else do you explain the story except that the story is real? But then again, there's always the option that the whole thing is a scam. Maybe Hopkins staged the whole thing, or maybe he and Cortell planned it together. It could be that Cortell masterminded the whole thing and then forged all those letters and hired actors to stage an elaborate drama for Hopkins. Then there's always the off chance that this might just be government mind control. Maybe Linda was somehow brainwashed and made to believe that she was abducted. But take a look at these options. Each of them is equally as incredible as the real story itself. If you think any of the other options are more believable, then what makes the actual story less believable? And if there's no credible alternative to explain Hopkins' story, then does this make Linda's alien abduction story the most believable, unbelievable alien abduction story ever? Share your thoughts in the comments. And thank you for watching. If you like stories like these, make sure you click the subscribe button before it disappears. See you in the next one.